Hello there. So in this video today, we are going to take a look at the make command and associated make files. Uh, I have to mention before moving forward that if you're new to this video series, uh, this playlist, then you should start off from the zero video. And uh, you know that's like the guide and eventually you will be at this point, the current point. So as part of uh, this video, then we're going to take a look at the make utility and uh, recall that in the previous video we started off or rather we kind of had the journey from assembly file or assembly code down to the machine code here and then we tried to prove or actually we proved that this is compliant with the rv32i uh, risk phi uh, instruction set right okay so moving on then today we are going to decipher what this make utility is and how it did all of this magic for us that's our intention today okay so first off uh, let's maybe try and understand what make is so let me just pull up uh, like a new file here so we have the canvas for uh, us to work on so the make command helps us automate right so it will essentially execute commands for us and then the question should be which commands how do we specify that so that is specified in something called the make file which is uh, well which is right here right within the test directory it is right here so we did have a make file uh, or it can be make file with lowercase m right so if you see the difference is this now can it be any other name yes it can be and that is a special uh, case we'll take a look at that uh, towards the end of the video i have to mention that make is very convoluted and kind of uh, would need an r or two uh, for the explanation of every feature kind of well not every feature most common features but what we are going to do today is limit ourselves uh, to the features of make and how to write make file that pertains to this example and slowly you know in the later videos we can peel the onion a little more uh, and discover more and more about the make file okay so can the make file be named something else uh, something else can it be named that the answer to this is yes how to do so towards the end of the video okay so make will then go look for one of these files and then it will read that file to info the commands what it needs to do the actions okay so how do we write a make file right so let's say this is our make file so what is the format of that file so first off there is something called a target right and a target is well it starts from the left side goes towards the right uh, there should be no space here it should start off as the first character on the line and then the target uh, by the way this target can be any name right alpha numerals so that is allowed well actually i haven't tried numerals ever uh, but alphabets yes that works alphabets and maybe underscores also work uh, so target followed by a colon the colon is mandatory followed by list of other targets or files and separated by a space and these are called or that line the chain of uh, what the target depends on is called dependency list right so this is called the dependency list now on the next line we specify what command it needs to execute if this target uh, is to be executed right so the commands need to be specified starting with the tab so there has to be a tab it it cannot be space it cannot be multiple spaces four spaces none of that it has to be a tab character followed by the command and there can be multiple commands so on multiple lines needs to start with the, the tabs again and there should be command 2 command 3 and so on and so forth and now a make file can also have multiple targets so you have to kind of provide space here then go to the next line and provide target 2 same story dependency list 
next line start with the tab commands command one command two so on and so forth so that's like the usual format of the make file now i have to mention one more important thing about thing about make which is if you simply execute make as a command which we did here and specify no target uh, it will execute the first target within the make file that's how make works okay and now with this as our background let's close this file and take a look at what is happening in this file now we'll return to what these are in a minute we'll we'll kind of revisit them first let's identify the targets so all here is a target debug here is a target and gdp is a target all then depends on main.s which is a dependency so all as a target will be executed if main.s is updated or the timestamp on that has changed so that's what it means to be dependent on something so if this changed then the target needs to change and for target to change it needs to execute these commands that's the idea and okay so if we notice here there are no dependencies which is fine so make is fine with that uh, make, make is fine with that gdb has no dependencies so that is fine no problem and if you see here we have the clean target and then there is something about the clean target right this we'll come to this in a minute clean also if you see has no dependencies but the command here does like a removal of files okay so what are we removing here uh, you know things that we generate here we want to get rid of those uh, so we have the clean target all right what is the phony dot phony colon clean so this is a special way to mention that hey you know clean doesn't have dependencies and even if it has you are supposed to execute clean always that's what it means so phony is a way to suggest that irrespective of the dependencies please execute this target all right then now let's return back uh, to what these are and to understand what these are we have to uh, take a look at these three commands here so if you notice we have something called dollar dollar gcc here followed by all of this and this is exactly the same line as this from here to here and something funny is happening here right? and all of all of these lines here relate to what happened here so what is going on so this gcc dollar gcc gcc itself is a variable uh, it's a placeholder it has an assignment it has some value in this case and when we do dollar brackets gcc it means okay read the variable gcc so add this or substitute with the value of the variable gcc so at this point then we are substituting the value and what is the value of this variable well it is uh, well it is this a little bit of turn but it is this now here we are reading another variable and what is that variable well that variable happens to be this so when we read gcc the dollar gcc uh, it is replaced with the risk v64 hyphen blah 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 uh, all of this text then the hyphen here and then we have a gcc because of this right so all of this variable gets replaced by uh, this line here this this much part that's the idea so now you can also kind of analyze the next line where we have this obj copy which is the object copy and that's specified here and then that expands using this to this that's the idea um, and then the final thing that i need to mention is this question mark equal to it is a way to specify to gc um, to make files or make the utility that this that this variable can be reassigned actually all variables can be reassigned but 
if this variable doesn't have any value specified to it use this as the default so this again is just by habit in my case typically the toolchain prefixes can also be specified on the command line again we are not going to go into the details of that and this variable can be set externally uh, not only this all of them can be uh, but typically this one is the one that we set externally and in this case if nothing is set actually in those case also if nothing is set then there has to be a default value that the make can assume and move forward so that is why we have the question mark and here if you see is just simple equals the space here doesn't matter can be any number of space or no spaces at all that doesn't matter and uh, again uh, see that all is the first uh, target in the file as you know seen from the top so when we do a make the all target is executed and so let me now go ahead and you know just for demonstration uh, kind of let me just do make uh, clean for example so when we do make clean notice that this exact command gets executed and as a result the file here disappeared uh, let me you know keep keep your eye on this and as i execute uh, make again uh, note how the files here uh, these two files were generated okay so now let's take a look at the special case in which uh, the make file is not called make file or make file again note the difference in the upper case and the lower case and so let's take a look at what happens when we don't have a make file in the directory but it's called something else now when you want to call it something else uh, it can have again any file name with an extension of empty that's number one the second is when we execute the make utility uh, we need to provide that file name to it so let's first you know just go ahead um, and you know, keep your eye here um, so let's just go ahead and kind of name this to name let's just name it my use dot nk so now you can notice that this file is here what i do now is come down here we need to test and when i do make okay so we see that make is com complaining that it did not find a file. now the way i specify use dot mk file uh, is something like so so keep, keep your eye here uh, so what i'll do is i'll type make and then use the minus f uh, option followed by um, the dot mk file minus uh, f space the make by the dot mk file. and when i do uh, do that when i go ahead and execute that uh, we see that it works exactly the same way as before when we had uh, this file called so that's the idea you just have to use the minus f flag like so to specify the file first and then again you know within that uh, what we can do is we can uh, say make minus f use dot mk space let's say i wanted to exclude clean as the target so i can go ahead and execute uh, that so the only thing that changes is minus f followed by the file name and then the target. That's about it. With this, we pretty much have everything we need uh, to understand me for our purposes. And uh, as and when we find more, uh, as and when we use more uh, nuanced syntax of make, uh, make or make file, uh, we'll kind of discuss it then.